Hello my lovely kids how are you all i hope you all are doing well so today we are going to start with lecture number 3 of the chapter plant kingdom as you already know that we have completed uh, the introduction of this chapter and the algae part and the bryophyte almost the bryophyte part and today's uh, topic will be topics will be the uh, the importance of bryophytes right and we'll start with pteridophytes we are going to understand about pteridophyte so i think without any delay let's start with our lecture i hope you will enjoy the lecture so uh, today first we are going to finish with the importance of bryophytes right what are the basically importance of bryophytes bryophytes if i say they have more ecological importance than the economic importance right they are impo more important to our nature than to us so their ecological importance is more than economic importance right so let's see their importance beta bryophytes in general uh, are very little economic importance they have very they are little important to us but they are very important to nature they can be uh, used as a uh, food for herbaceous mammal birds and animals so yes bryophytes can serve as a source of food for animals and species of sphagnum it is a moss right uh provides peat provides peat right peat is formed by the fossilization of sphagnum so when the sphagnum die over the years it form a dark colored fossilized compound known as peat and peat can be used for fuel it can be used for manure so peat is obtained from sphagnum and it can be used as a fuel or manure that's why one of the name of sphagnum is peat moss why we call it peat moss because peat is obtained from sphagnum and peat can be used for as a fuel as a source of fuel or as a source of manure right they are a good packaging material for transshipment of living material because of their capacity to hold water right so when uh, the sphagnum is dry mostly uh, they can absorb lots of water and they can retain water so they are very helpful if you want to pack any living material if suppose if you want to pack any other living plant so you can take help of the sphagnum because it has good water holding capacity it is also known as cotton moss right because it has good water holding capacity that's why it is known as cotton moss and because they are found in marshy area and marshy acidic area is also known as bog that's why they are also known as bog moss right this is an interesting thing to know that sphagnum has three name peat moss because we obtain peat from sphagnum cotton moss because they have good water holding capacity bog moss because they are found in marshy acidic area and that area is also known as bog because they are found in bog area that's why we call them bog moss so there are three names of sphagnum peat cotton and bog moss very important now in 12th class you will study this topic ecological succession in which you will understand that how soil was formed for the first time how different organism came in a uh, in a land where no other species was there how a barren land was uh, occupied by different organism that is known as ecological succession so mosses along with lichens what are lichens lichens are algae plus fungi when algae lives with fungi and that is known as lichen so mosses and lichens they were the first organism to colonize the rock and have 
are of great ecological importance so mosses and lichens somehow they help in the form they helped in the formation of soil during the course of evolution or during ecological succession so they were the first one to grow on a rock right they decompose rocks so they can basically break down the rock and help in the formation of soil particles so yes they decompose rock making the substrate suitable for the growth of higher plant right so ecological succession tells us that first lichens came on a rock then uh, mosses then herbs then shrub and finally tall trees such sequence is known as ecological succession that how a barren rock has been converted into a forest right this is known as ecological succession and mosses along with lichens they are the organism that help in ecological succession so these are the importance of bryophytes i hope this is clear to all of you so as you know that bryophytes is divided into two groups liverworts and mosses i have already showed you the photo of uh, liverworts the diagram of liverworts today i'm going to show you the photo or the diagram of mosses right we have already discussed the liverworts now these are mosses beta this first diagram is of funaria funaria is also known as cord moss because it looks like a cord or cable so it is also known as cord moss right as you can see this is the gametophyte parent body this is the parent body and it is haploid and above which after fertilization a parasitic almost parasitic structure is formed which is known as sporophyte foot sitta and capsule foot sitta and capsule sporophyte is formed above gametophyte and it is diploid this is we have already discussed in the mosses and this picture is of sphagnum beta which is known as bog moss cotton moss and uh, your peat moss right so here you can see this is archegonial branch it contains archegonia here you can see that both male and female sex organ are present on the same plant this is anthredial branch which means it contains anthredia male sex organ so as you can observe here that the male and female sex organ is present on the same plant right so in mosses male and female sex organ is present on the same plant i hope this is clear to all of you we have already discussed it in the last class this is just a revision so this is the real picture of mosses this is how mosses looks like in reality right so here you can see that these structures below are gametophyte these are the parent body haploid and the above part is sporophyte the above part is sporophyte so as you can see in reality how funaria looks like so this is funaria and this is the real picture of sphagnum that how sphagnum look like in reality right so this is the picture of funaria and sphagnum right i hope the real picture of plants make uh, make it interesting for you guys to understand that what are we studying right how do you, how do they look like whenever we hear plant we uh, only think of the angiosperms the one who flowers right so yes these are also plants these are also considered to be as plants 
i hope this is clear to all of you after this we are going to start with third group of plant which are pteridophytes which are pteridophytes so let's discuss with pteridophyte that what are basically pteridophytes beta pteridophytes were the first group of plants to have vascular bundle they were the first group of plants to have vascular bundles right they were the first tracheophytes and they are known as vascular amphibians of plant kingdom they are known as vascular amphibians of plant kingdom amphibians of plant kingdom is bryophyte and vascular amphibian of plant kingdom is pteridophyte vascular means they have xylem and phloem they have xylem and phloem and amphibians means they live on land but depend on water for sexual reproduction just like bryophytes just like bryophytes so if the question comes amphibians of plant kingdom you will write bryophyte if question comes vascular amphibians of plant kingdom you will write pteridophytes beta they are mostly terrestrial they live they like to live on they like to grow on cool damp and shady places they live on they like to live on cool damp and shady places some aquatic pteridophytes are there are some aquatic pteridophytes like azola like azola salvinia right azola salvinia marsilia so these are some of the example of pteridophytes that grow on plants or that live on water right that live on water sorry so mostly pteridophytes are basically terrestrial but they can be aquatic let's talk about their main body let's talk about their main body for the first time the main body was sporophyte remember very important as you already know that algae and bryophytes their main body is gametophyte but for the first time in pteridophyte the main body is sporophyte sporophyte means spore producing body gametophyte means gamete producing body sporophyte is divided uh, a sporophyte basically is diploid first of all it is diploid right vascular bundles are present and their stem root and leaf are true true stem leaf and root are present so for the first time the stem root and leaf are true true means that leaf root stem should be diploid and they should have vascular bundle so both the conditions are true here Both uh, all are diploid and all have vascular bundles here. 
so that's why true stem leaf root and uh, root are present in pteridophyte for the first time remember beta their main body is sporophyte and for the first time and sporophyte is a spore producing body which is deployed vascular bundle are present and true stem leaf root are present okay so now i'm going to discuss about root stem and leaf of pteridophytes in detail one by one so let's start with the discussion i hope all of these things are clear to you guys so let's talk about the stem of pteridophyte right remember their stem is diploid and soft diploid means the cells of stem are having two sets of chromosome which means every chromosome has two copies and known as rhizome known as rhizome right so stem is diploid soft and known as rhizome let's talk about their leaf beta their leaf is divided into two types microphyll macrophyll as the name indicates micro means small and macro means large right microphyll means small leaves macro means large leaf so microphyll is seen in selaginella i will show you the diagram or picture of all the plants don't worry selaginella and macrophyll example are ferns ferns are generally uh, you put it uh, at your home for ornamental purposes they look beautiful right so selaginella i'll draw a diagram of selaginella here this is the stem of selaginella very soft and above which you can see small small leaves these are leaves and from the stem you can see a branch protruding and from that branch you can see roots so their roots are growing coming out from the stem right so i label it this is the stem beta these are leaf and this is rhizomes for special branch branch of stem and from branch of stem roots are formed roots are formed right now let's talk about this is the structure of selaginella let's talk about their root beta their root is coming out from stem right they have adventitious root they have adventitious root adventitious root means when the root coming out from stem or leaf when the root is coming out from the stem or leaf generally in a plant root comes out from radical part there are two parts radical and plumule you will understand it uh, you will study it in the morphology chapter don't worry i am just giving you reference here when the root coming from the radical part that is known as your tap root right if it is coming from either stem or leaf it is known as adventitious root it is known as adventitious root so remember this root is adventitious this root is adventitious so yes this is about stem leaf and root leaf is also diploid their cells are having two sets of chromosome 
and root is also deployed root is also deployed so everything in the main body of pteridophyte is deployed everything in the body main body of pteridophyte is deployed that's why we say their main body is sporophyte their main body is sporophyte okay so now i'll tell you about how they reproduce how they reproduce right what are the special feature for their reproduction i hope this is clear to all of you so let's talk about how they reproduce reproduction in pteridophyte they have a special leaf they have special leaf sporophyll they have a special leaf known as sporophyll and this leaf has some spots i will show you the spots in reality these spots are known as sorus plural is sorai plural is sorai this sorus is having sporangia everything is deployed everything is deployed beta remember everything is deployed sporangia produces spores through meiosis that's why the main body is sporophyte remember they have a special leaf known as sporophyll sporophyll has some spots known as sorus sorus ha are having sporangia sporangia is basically a tissue group of cell which undergo meiosis and produces spores so spores are produced inside or on this leaf special leaf known as sporophyll now beta this sporophyll remember they can be present as a loose leaf or they can be present as a compact leaf they can be present as a loose sporophyll like this or they can be present as a compact structure like this but at this compact structure is known as cone or strobili this compact structure is known as cone or strobili the loose sporophyll are present on ferns example of loose sporophylls is ferns an example of compact sporophyll are selaginella this is the second time you are hearing this term selaginella very important and another example is equisetum i will tell you one fun factor about equisetum later on so there are two pteridophytes that you need to learn that are having compact sporophyll right so i am again explaining reproduction occurs through a special leaf known as sporophyll sporophyll can be present like this loose they can be present like compact structure known as cone or strobili the leaves has some spots known as sorus sorus have sporangia tissue tissue undergo meiosis and for, form spores okay so this is about sporophyll i am giving you few seconds to understand it let me know if you have any doubt in any topic in the comment section after this i'll show you some pictures of pteridophyte some of the pteridophytes okay i think 
it's clear to all of you so yeah this is selaginella and there you can find the cones there you can find the cones this is selaginella these are ferns can you see this dark spots beta this dark spots are sorus or sorai these dark spots are sorai right in inside sorai spores will be produced this is salvinia aquatic pteridophyte salvinia lives on land oh uh, sorry water salvinia aquatic okay now i'll talk about a fun fact about equisetum right as you can see structure of equisetum here this is like cone or strobili in equisetum so equisetum is known as horse tail as you can see the structure of equisetum here it's look like the tail of horse so equisetum is known as horse tail why first thing that it looks like horse tail and there is uh, one more reason looks like tail of horse and second is the equisetum uh, uh, is rough equisetum is rough like the tail of horse due to silica in their in the cell wall their cell are having silica in their cell wall their cell is having silica that's why they are rough like the tail of horse so there are two reason first they look like the tail of horse then they are rough like the tail of horse that's why we call them horse tail right so this is the stem stem is known as rhizome right and these are roots these are roots these are roots adventitious root so this is about equisetum i really hope you enjoyed this fun fact about equisetum there will be lots of fun fact that we are going to discuss in this chapter so after this we are going to discuss the two types of pteridophytes homosporous and heterosporous i hope everything is clear till here if you have any doubt please let me know in the comment section now the types of pteridophytes there are two type of pteridophyte beta homosporous pteridophyte and heterosporous pteridophyte for the first time this feature was seen in the plant for the first time this feature came in plant right so heterosporous condition for the first time came in plants otherwise all bryophytes algae were homosporous homosporous means as the name indicates produces similar kind of spores they are produces similar kind of spores and 
example most of the tornado fights most of the tornado fights remember beta when a new feature came it came in only few plants right otherwise most of the tornado fights are having homosporous condition like lycopodium you have to remember the example whatever i am writing in this chapter or whatever example i write in any other chapter please remember those that are important and dryopteris so most of the tetrophytes are having or producing same kind of spore whereas in heterosporous tetrophyte it produces two kind of spores microspore and megaspore microspore is a male spore and megaspore is a female spore so in heterosporous tetrophyte for the first time male and female spores are formed separately and example are few tetrophytes so few tetrophytes are having heterosporous condition example you uh, i'll give you mnemonic to learn it mass marsilia azola salvinia selaginella these are the four types of fights producing two different kind of spore whereas marsilia azola salvinia are aquatic type of fight whereas selaginella was is terrestrial selaginella is terrestrial so very few teridophyte for the first time produces two kind of spore microspore and megaspore remember there is a note here that i'm writing all bryophytes are homosporous so heterospore first came in teridophytes all bryophytes are homosporous they produce same kind of spore remember so heterosporous condition first came in te in few teridophytes i'll give you a few seconds to understand it let me know if you have any doubt we are going to understand first heterosporous or uh, homosporous teridophyte then i'll tell you homospor i'll tell you about homosporous teridophyte heterosporous teridophyte okay so take few seconds and understand it and let me know if you have any doubt okay so let's start with homosporous teridophyte first homosporous teridophytes okay so let's talk about homosporous teridophyte so their main body is sporophyte which is diploid remember so i'll make a hypothetical diagram here these are sporophyll 2n these are sorae or sorus 2n sorus are having sporangia sporus 
स्पोरांजियम टू एन स्पोरांजियम इज अ टिश्यू स्पोरांजियम हैज स्पोर मदर सेल्स देर आर मेनी सेल्स इन स्पोरांजियम डिप्लॉयड स्पोर मदर सेल बेटा अंडरगो मियोसिस Remember, meiosis occurring where in pteridophyte and spore mother cell, they are producing spores, and spores are haploid because meiosis reduces the chromosome number into half. It makes the condition from diploid to haploid. Now, spores are formed, beta. They are released, and germinate into they are released from the parent body they will be released from the parent body and germinate into a structure known as gametophyte they germinate into gametophyte where in cool damp and shady places wherever the spore find cool damp and shady places it will germinate into gametophyte so this is gametophyte right so the spore will be separated from the parent body and it will form gametophyte this gametophyte beta will have rhizoids i'll just these are rhizoids so this is what we call as gametophyte or prothallus either we call it gametophyte and prothallus beta this structure has both male sex organ anthridium or anthridia in plural and female sex organ archegonia so this uh, this gametophyte are having both male and female sex organ and remember this gametophyte is very small photosynthetic and inconspicuous in conspicuous means very small we are not able to observe it in conspicuous right so here it is very inconspicuous very small photosynthetic and inconspicuous and it is having both male and female sex organ and male sex organ produce male gamete which is haploid everything is haploid beta everything is haploid everything is haploid and male sex organ is uh, male gamete is multiflagellated many flagella many flagella in male gamete the female sex organ will produce female gamete or egg cell right it is also haploid everything after meiosis will be haploid until fertilization occurs now what will happen beta an egg cell is non motile remember the male gamete is motile but egg cell is non motile now the male gamete will swim towards the female gamete
फर्टिलाइजेशन अकर्स हाउ मेल गैमीट स्विम टूवर्ड्स फीमेल गैमीट फर्टिलाइजेशन अकर्स जायगॉट इज फॉर्म्ड फ्रॉम जायगॉट एम्ब्रियो इज फॉर्म्ड एंड फ्रॉम एम्ब्रियो बेटा द मेन बॉडी इज फॉर्म एवरीथिंग इज डिप्लॉयड आफ्टर फर्टिलाइजेशन राइट सो एज यू कैन सी हर द लाइफ साइकिल इज वेरी ईजी दिस इज मेन बॉडी इट विल प्रोड्यूस स्पोर्ट्स थ्रू मियोसिस द स्पोर वेर एवर इट फाइंड स्कूल डैम्प एंड शेडी प्लेस द स्पोर विल बी सेपरेटेड फ्रॉम द पेरेंट बॉडी एंड इट विल फॉर्म अ स्ट्रक्चर लाइक दिस नोन एज गेमीटो फाइट ऑफ प्रोथेलस इट इज हेप्लॉयड बिकॉज इट इज फॉर्म आफ्टर मियोसिस it is very small photosynthetic and inconspicuous we are not able to observe it is it is very small it has both female and male sex organ the male sex organ will produce male gamete having many flagella female sex organ produces female gamete non motile no flagella they will fuse zygote will be formed again diploid condition is restored zygote will form embryo and embryo will form main body so this is how homosporous steidophyte work This is how homospore steidophyte work. Okay. So I am giving you few seconds to understand it. Let me know if you have any confusion. Can I say here the gametophyte is independent? It is not formed on the parent body. It is. independent it is independent it is not dependent on the parent body it is produced or it is formed from separated from the parent body it is not dependent on the parent body that's why it is independent okay after this we are going to discuss about heterosporous steidophytes which are quite different which are quite different okay so let's discuss the heterospora steidophyte they are quite different as you know their main body is sporophyte right which is diploid this a uh, body sporophyte have sporophylls sorae then sorae have sporophylls same thing everything is diploid Sporophylls have spore mother cell. Have microspore mother cell. Now, the changes here you can uh, compare, and have mega spore mother cell. so microspore mother cell and megaspore mother cell both are diploid remember they will undergo meiosis and form microspores and megaspore microspore haploid megaspore haploid okay now microspore will be released from the parent body and germinates into male gametophyte 
Here the gametophyte will be produced separately. There will be no single gametophyte. It will be haploid. Right? Male spore will produce male gametophyte. Now what will happen to megaspore beta? It will retain on parent body wills for some time. It will retain for on parent body for some time right it will retain on parent body for some time the male spore will get separated from the parent body but female spore has some attachment issues so it will retain on parent body so and germinate into female gametophyte germinate into female gametophyte so this male gametophyte is independent but female gametophyte is formed on the parent body right now it will produce male gamete haploid motile having many flagella the female gamete a female sex organ will produce female gamete it has female sex organ that's why it produce female gamete haploid non motile it don't have any flagella right the male and female gamete will fertilize the male gamete will come swim towards the female gamete fertilization occurs zygote is formed zygote will develop into embryo all of these thing occurring inside gametophyte which is present on the parent body so all of these events occurring inside female gametophyte present on parent body right so all of these event occurring on the parent body over parent body female gametophyte is present so everything is occurring on female gametophyte which is present on the parent body now after this it will de attach and form new body it will de attach and form new body right so here the female gametophyte will retain on the parent body for some time but after embryo is formed it will de attach and the embryo will develop into new body embryo will develop into new body let me again write it okay so this is how heterosporous steidophyte are different from homosporous steidophyte okay i hope this is clear to all of you i'm giving you few seconds to understand Let me know if you have any doubt.
I hope everything is clear. So this event is very important for evolution evolution point of view, right? So this is very important. The retainment of female gametophyte over the parent body was very important for the evolutionary point of view. Okay, so this. heterospore steidophyte or heterospore is important for evolutionary point of view right so i'll write it here that heterospore in teridophyte is important or was important for evolution of seed was important event in evolution of seed although they did not produce seed they did not produce seed but heterospore itself is a main event that will help in the production of seed in the next group of plant remember they did not produce seed teridophytes do not form seed remember they do not form seed they just show the event how to form seed but they do not produce seed seeds were first observed in or first formed in gymnosperm i hope this is clear to all of you uh i'm giving you few seconds to understand it after this i'm going to tell you some importance of teridophytes and there are four classes in teridophyte that we need to learn so four classes of teridophytes teridophytes have four classes xylopsida lycopsida synopsida pteropsida right xylopsida example is xylotum example is xylotum in lycopsida example is lycopodium selaginella synopsida the example is equisetum example is equisetum and in teropsida example is teris basically ferns they come under teropsida and dryopteris and edientum edientum is also known as walking fern why we call it walking fern because on a tip of leaf of edentum a bud is present so wherever or whenever that tip touches the ground a new plant is formed so it looks like this so they have a bud over here whenever this bud touches the ground a new plant is formed so that's why it looks like that they are walking actually they are not walking so every time their leaf tip touches the ground a new plant is formed that's why edentum is known as walking fern 
so these are the four classes of pteridophyte you have to remember very important after this i'll tell you some importance of pteridophytes and we'll end this lecture now after that importance of pteridophytes importance of pteridophyte first is soil binding due to root due to presence of roots they can bind soil particle they can prevent soil erosion source of anti helminthic drug which means we can extract medicine from them against worms example from dryopteris from dryopteris we can obtain anti helminthic drugs third source of starch beta marsilia aquatic fern marsilia is a source of starch ornamental plant ferns we put ferns in our home as an ornamental plant it looks very good it looks beautiful ornamental plants example ferns and last is equisetum is used for can be used for washing utensils and polishing of metals used for washing utensils because they are rough because of silica and polishing i told you we call them we call equisetum horse tail because they are uh, they are rough due to silica in their cell wall so that's why they can be used for washing utensils and polishing the metals so yes these are some of the importance of pteridophytes and this will be the last topic that we are going to discuss today i hope everything was clear to you guys please make sure that you revise every topic before you come to the next class it will help you to understand the next topic because every group of plant is related here so now the question is from evolutionary point of view the retention of female gametophyte within with the developing embryo on the parent body for some time i told you this is the parent body the female gametophyte is formed on the parent body for some time and that occurs for the first time in pteridophytes or especially heterosporous pteridophyte especially heterosporous pteridophyte so if the option comes pteridophyte you will choose pteridophyte if the questions come uh, if the options come heterosporous pteridophyte then you will choose heterosporous pteridophyte okay so it depends upon the option both are correct pteridophyte or heterosporous pteridophyte I really hope everything is clear to you guys and uh, I cleared your most of the concept I seriously hope so let me know in the comment section and do revise the topic before you come to the tomorrow's class and after we finish plant kingdom uh, your new chapter will start which is morphology of traveling plant on Wednesday okay so till then take care everyone bye and keep working hard